In this video, I'm going to show you how to create HTML with JavaScript. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoy this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a project that I'm currently working on. Right now I have some HTML and CSS already written. In the head tag, I have the font family that I'm going to use for this project, and then I have the body tag. And in the header section, I have an H1 that contains the title for this website and the add new button. And I have a main section of the application that has an H2 header for new containers and then an empty div with an ID of div container. In the CSS, I first declared some color variables and then I declared a zero margin and padding and a box sizing of border box. I added some treatment for the body and for the header section, I made these two elements display flex with some justified content and aligning the items. And then I also added this bottom border line. For this button, I also just added some light styling and then I also added a hover and active state. Now I want to add functionality, so when the user taps this add new button, a new div is created on the page. So I'm going to create this functionality with JavaScript. So I'm going to go to JS, and first I'm going to declare some variables that I want to reference in my JavaScript file. So initially I have this element in my HTML, but I need to reference it in my JavaScript in order to add an action to it. So in my JavaScript, I'm going to write const button add, and then I'm writing document.querySelector. And this basically means look at the HTML document and query something with this value that I'm going to put in the parentheses. And since we added a class of button add to this button, I'm going to reference that class in these parentheses. So I'm going to write dot button dash add. So what this is saying is make a new variable that's inside JavaScript that represents items in the document that have the class of button add, which is just this one button. Now, with that button add, I want to add an event listener. So I'm going to write dot add event listener, which tells the website to pay attention when something is happening to that button. So what do I want to look out for? Well, I want to look out for a click. So when this button is clicked, meaning it's tapped on, I want some action to occur. So here, first you write what you want it to listen to, and then you write the function name. So I'm going to write a new function called add new. So right now we don't have a function called add new. So that's why I'm getting this error message. So the next thing for us to do is to write the function called add new. So I'm going to write function add new. And for this function, I want to create a div. So contained in this function, I'm going to write another variable and I'm going to call it new div. And I want this variable to make a new div in our HTML. So I'm going to write document.create element. And the kind of element I want it to create is a div. So I'm just putting that in the parentheses. And first, just to make sure that this is working properly, I'm going to console log the word add just to verify what we're doing is actually working. So here I'm bringing up the console log after I clicked add new. And as you can see, the word add is appearing in the console. So I know that this is working properly. Great. So now I can inspect the element. And if I look in the HTML, I currently don't see any divs here. And it's because they're not actually being added to the document. We're creating these divs, but they're not going anywhere. So we need to append these divs that we're creating to the HTML document. So that way we know they're actually being added onto the page. So first I'm just going to write document.body.appendChild. And what do we want to append to the body? Well, we just made this new div. So I'm going to append that to the body. So now I'm going to click add new a few times. I'm going to inspect the page again. And now in that body tag, I actually have these divs that are added onto the page. Now, because they don't have any styling to them, we actually don't see them on the page. But in the HTML, we actually created four divs. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some CSS to those divs so we can actually see them on the screen. 
So before we append these elements to the HTML, I'm actually going to want to add some styling to them so we actually can see them on the page. So before that append child, I'm going to reference the new div and I want to add a class to it and we're going to stylize this class in the CSS. So I'm going to write class list.add, which basically means add this class to this new div that we just created. And I'm just going to call it div shadow since we will add a shadow to this element. Now in my CSS, I'm going to reference that div shadow class and I'm going to add several properties. So first I'm just going to add a width and a height and then I'm going to add a box shadow. And again, I'm just referencing the variables that I created at the beginning of the project. So now if I click add new, I can actually see the divs being created on the screen. Now they're a little close to one another, so I'm going to add a margin. So I'm going to write margin, zero, one M, one M, and then zero. So now as I add new divs, they just get added to the bottom of the page. So this is looking really great so far, but all of these elements are being added to the bottom of the page. What if you wanted to add these elements to a particular location on the page? So in the HTML, I'm just going to create a new section and in it, I'm just going to create another H2 and I'm just going to call it footer for now. So as I click add new, these elements are not being added in the new containers folder. They are being added beneath the footer. So I want to control where these divs are actually going. I want to place them in the new containers area. So back in my HTML, I already have a div with an ID of div container, and I want the new divs to go in this container. So jumping back into the JavaScript, again, I have to reference this container in the JavaScript and then tell the new divs to go in that container. So in the JavaScript, I'm going to make another const and I'm going to call it div container. I'm going to write document dot get element by ID because this one has an ID of div container. So again, in the parentheses, I'm going to reference that div container. So this is saying make a variable in JavaScript called div container. And I wanted to reference this element in the HTML. So back in the function, instead of referencing document dot body, I'm instead going to append these elements to this new container that we just created. So I'm going to write div container, which references this variable, which references this HTML element. So this function is now saying, create a new div, add the CSS styling to it, but instead of placing it at the end of the body, place the elements in this div container. So now when I click add new, the elements are added in this area. So again, we can inspect this element and in the HTML, I have that main with the div container. I can open it up and see all the divs that we added with the class assigned to it. Now all of these elements are added in that new container area, which is what I wanted to do. However, each one is listed vertically. So as I click add new, we potentially won't see the footer on the screen anymore. And we will just have this big area of blank space. Instead, I want these elements to flow horizontally on the page. So in order to do that, I can add some styling within my CSS. So I'm going to reference this ID of div container. And for this div container, I actually want to set the display to flex. So that way all the elements flow horizontally. Now we notice a problem right away. As I keep clicking add new, the number of divs in the row increases, making them each smaller and smaller. So instead I want to allow these elements to wrap. So I'm going to write flex wrap and then set the value to wrap, which will then allow them to go on the next line. I'm also just going to set the width to 100% of the parent element, and then set a margin top and bottom to 2M and zero to the left and right. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to alternate styles of these divs. So in the CSS, I'm going to reference that class that we applied and I want some of these divs to have an external shadow and some of them to have an internal shadow. So I'm going to write div shadow and then I'm going to reference the nth child. So if the child is odd, I want it to have a particular box shadow. So I'm actually going to take this box shadow and cut it and then paste it over here. So now we can see that half the containers have the styling. 
Then I'm going to copy this and paste it and make it even. So every even child, I want it to have a different shadow. So here I'm going to write inset, which will make an internal shadow. So as you can see, as the divs are being added onto the page, the styling of it alternates. And for a little bit of an effect, I'm going to add a hover state to these divs and then also a transition so it animates. So now when I hover over these divs, they actually animate. So there you go. That's how I created HTML elements with JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.